Welcome back to Garage Toys, everyone. Today we're gonna to be tackling a dead battery in my 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie. The other day when I went to start it up, dead battery, uh, so I went ahead and charged it up and I, the truck started, but I got an error code. Uh, we're gonna go through that. We're gonna check the battery. We're going to check the alternator, make sure that it's functioning properly and charging the battery as it should be, and uh, replacing the battery. I'm gonna show you how to uh, replace it from start to finish. Hopefully this helps and you guys enjoy the video. If you get in your truck and you press the start button and this happens, which is nothing, you probably got a dead battery. Let's try it again. It's not good. This truck is a 2019. It was built in 2018, uh, I think in like April of 2018. So a little, about four and a half years old as far as the battery goes. Um, it's dying a little prematurely, but uh, I, you know, I guess that's how long things last these days. So uh, first things first, let's go check and uh, jump the battery and see if it will hold a charge and uh, start the truck. All right, so I got the jump pack connected. These things are great. If you don't have one, get one, keep it in your car. They're a lifesaver. Negative, negative, positive, positive. Just letting it uh, charge up the battery a little bit. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a whirl. And it started up. All right, so the truck is running, and uh, at this point, we're gonna check the voltage from the alternator to make sure it's functioning properly. Please be very careful. You've got a serpentine belt that's running, an alternator that's rotating right near your hands. If you're not comfortable doing this, just go to you know Advanced Auto or an AutoZone, and, and they'll check it for you. So take the positive lead from a um, voltmeter, you can see in the lower left-hand side, and touch where the plastic clip is. I took it off, you could see it in the beginning of the video, and just touch that nut with the positive lead and the negative lead, just touch the casing on the alternator and uh, it's grounded. You can see we're getting 15, just over 15 volts. It's functioning properly, so we can discount that as a cause of the failure. All right, so take your voltmeter, make sure it's set to 20 volts or something like that, um, and Take your negative lead, and you can see that we attached it on the negative and the positive. Uh, we're going to attach it to the positive side, and we'll check the voltage to see if it's uh, see what we're getting. And we're getting 10 volts, so that's not sufficient. So clearly, there's something wrong with the battery. Now we got eight volts, so it's. Uh something's very wrong here with this battery. So we're going to just go ahead and change this battery out at this point. So what I have here is an OBD2 scanner. Great tool for the garage. If you don't have one, try to get one, or you can just go to any parts store and they'll read the codes for you. So in the Ram and in most cars, it's right underneath here, connect it. There you go. And just press the ignition twice without your foot on the brake so you don't try to start it. <clears throat> and this will allow the scanner to try to read the codes. You just hit enter and it's going to read the codes. Attempting to communicate with the vehicle. And it's got uh, two codes, P1 DF3 and P1 DF3, I guess the same thing. So it also threw a different one earlier. I forget what it was, but I'll, I'll put it down on the screen so you guys can um, know what it was. All right, so we got two codes, um, same code here. 
I am just for my research. It looks like it's having trouble communicating with the ECU. Um, so I, I have a feeling it's just the battery. When the battery's dead, it's not allowing the modules to uh, communicate with the ECU correctly. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, erase the codes and I'm going to go ahead and change the battery because the battery's not holding the charge. It's obviously um, not functioning properly. So I'm gonna take a chance and just replace the battery. In order to get the battery out, you need a 10 millimeter socket, an extension, and a socket wrench, okay? There's, there are three things we have to take off. There's a, a battery lead on the negative, battery lead on the positive, and there's a bolt down here that holds the battery down as well. So once we take these two off, we can take this boot off and then take the third bolt off. Let's go ahead and take the negative off first. Okay. Keep in mind, you're gonna lose all your settings Take the positive off. Okay. Just work it loose. You can pry it apart if you want. There you go. All right, so now the leads are off. Should be able to just pull this boot off. Okay. All right, so now that the boot's off, use your extension. And get that bottom, bottom bolt off. This thing was very loose, like hand, hand tight loose, which is a little alarming, but anyways. Battery's not going to go anywhere. All right. So here's how it comes out here. Here's how it works. The battery's here. So as it's tightened down, it just holds the battery down right there. Okay. So remember that when you put it back on. Now the battery can come out. All right, did some research for a car battery and looks like the best deal is at Costco. They have, for the H7 group size, they have two different options. The traditional lead acid battery for 147 and then an AGM um, battery for 185. Uh, gives you a little bit more uh, cold cranking amps. So I'm off to Costco to get a battery. I'll see which one they have and uh, we'll pick it up. All right, got the new battery. This thing is heavy. Heavier than the other one. Okay. Installation is just the reverse of the removal. So here we go. Got it in place. And now we can put this first lock down. Okay. <clears throat> 
obviously you don't need to lock it down too much this thing was kind of loose and I think they stripped it that's why when they installed it okay now we put the boot on Got to take this little cap off the, ba the battery. Tighten the lead. Just wear eye protection when you're doing this. Just get it snug. You don't have to over tighten it. If you over tighten it, it's going to just cause problems. <clears throat> All right. And that's it. Not too bad. What does that take? Two minutes and we're done. All right. Just for ha ha's, I'm going to check the voltage on this battery before I try to start it. And what do we have? 12.43 hopefully this is the only problem just wanted to mention that i did end up getting the agm battery they had both at costco uh, i figured i'd just try out the agm for the price differential i'd rather get the uh the better battery so uh, we'll see how it goes took the truck around the block uh took it for a little ride uh just to make sure that no engine codes came up or anything like that uh came back and um started it a couple times let it uh, shut down and uh, no problems. Everything seems to be fine. The uh, car's driving fine. I did check the voltage, uh, like 12.6 volts after it was sitting for a couple of minutes. I'll check it tomorrow, see if there's you know some kind of drain in the battery system that, uh, or in, in the charging system that I should maybe take a look at. But uh, if there are any updates or anything like that, I'll include an update uh, as a follow-up to this video. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said before, if it helped you out, please like and subscribe and check out our other videos. And um, we'll see you soon. Take care.